It's the NFL on EA Sports. And if it's in the game, it's in the game. It's the Minnesota Vikings and the Carolina Panthers coming up next. Just a spectacular afternoon for football here in the Tar Heel State of North Carolina as EA Sports welcomes you inside Bank of America Stadium in Uptown Charlotte. Today we've got an intriguing NFC matchup lined up here as it'll be the Minnesota Vikings taking on the Carolina Panthers. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. As CD folks are excited here in Carolina. They have been since March 10th. That being the day that the Panthers traded up with the Bears for the right to select Alabama's Bryce Young first overall. And selected first overall, they did. And not only that, during the free agent period, the rest of the draft, they also tried to surround this young quarterback with extra talent, trying to get him activated early so he can be a starter from day one. Meanwhile, for the visiting Vikings, we know all about the skilled players on offense, but they're looking to make up some ground on the defensive side of the ball this season because they were second from the bottom in total defense a year ago. What they want to do is find a way to be more consistent on that side of the ball and not rely on making big plays late in games in order to secure victories. They want to be able to stop people earlier. That's what they're looking to do in 2023. set to get us going and we are underway here in Charlotte and no chance to get away as they'll get him down at about the 17 yard line Minnesota's offense and QB Kirk Cousins set to go here not bad for a fourth round draft pick well over 100 career starts now and the chemistry with his top targets really on point they spent a lot of time in practice and after practice making sure the routes are run well and he knows exactly where they're going to be on the field and when they get open he delivers first and ten and they've got three tight ends out there a jumbo package look jefferson gonna go in motion right They'll fake it on the jet sweep, and instead, a handoff up the middle. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. Well, they held him to a short gain on that one, and it almost felt like on that first run, they were trying to just throw the jab at him. So how do you stop a jab? Get closer and smother it, just as they did on that last play. Cousins now on second down. That's caught by the big tight end, T.J. Hawkinson. And he'll be corralled well upfield right around the 40-yard line. That good for 21 yards on the catch and run. Cousins on first down. That's complete to Justin Jefferson. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. Another nice gain, 13 yards that time, and another first down. Now that was pretty. They executed that curl route versus zone coverage, and that changes things a little bit because against man, it's often a tight curl, a tight, a sharply run route. Against zone, you're just looking for that open spot, that dead area, so you may curl it a little bit wider just to get to that place. And usually a tight window. He fired a bullet in there for the completion. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. Now Cousins. Room to maneuver at the 35. Now he'll be out just a yard or two shy of the 30. Another good completion on the drive as the Vikings have a first down. As long as you go through your proper reads and progressions, the drag route can be one of those old reliable plays because usually it's good for a good chunk of yardage as we just saw there. And those guys like it, right? They can get the ball with a full head of steam. Especially against man coverage because man coverage, they're typically running away from someone and not worrying about traffic coming out on the other end. And a nice gain of 21 yards. 
Really a solid start here on the opening drive, Charles. He's now 4-4, and they're already in plus territory. Brandon, he's been so precise to start this game. Like we're watching an operation taking place right now. Master Surgeon at work. Now a first and 10 at the 11. Throwing Cousins. Another one on this play for Justin Jefferson. That will go as a pickup of seven on the seventh play of the drive. Well, that's not just his first, not his second, already his third completion here on the opening drive. And I think it's safe to say that getting him the ball in this game, one of their top priorities. And a top priority for the defense has got to be finding ways to cover him. And I don't think you can have one basic coverage to get it done. You have to throw a number of coverages at him, make him think as he's running downfield, and hope you can create a little bit of havoc. It's a three-yard pickup, and that sets up a first and goal. Sometimes I get almost mesmerized watching these runners who have great vision. You know, those eyes that carry their feet to open spaces, make people miss. I just love watching those guys go to work. Madison is in. Touchdown, Minnesota. Well, first quarter, maybe too early to talk about statement drives, Charles, but that sure seemed like a statement drive right there. Well, if we're going to talk about statement drives, I think what they're saying is we're going to establish the run. They gave it to him early and often on this drive, and he wound up taking it into the end zone. Joseph connects on the extra point, and that makes the score 7-0. Now Joseph tees it up to kick off following the touchdown. And he'll take it a yard or so past the 20, call it the 21. So here are the Panthers now for their opening drive. And they will be led out by the youngster, the rookie, their QB. We're seeing it more and more in this league, how teams love to have athletes back there taking the snaps, guys who can throw it, and move around and get yards with their legs if needed. He's one of the best examples that we see out there right now. He can throw for hundreds of yards one week and then run for 100 plus the next. He adds an extra dimension that really confounds defenses when he puts it all together. Young looks to throw on first down. Left side here to Sanders. And he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. It'll be a gain of 10 to start the drive out by a few inches. That'll be a first down. We'll see what kind of mindset they have here offensively after giving up the touchdown on the opening drive. And based on our time with them, you know, prior to this game, I feel like they've got a good mindset going in. In fact, the discussion that we had with the coaching staff was, you know, we may give up some points in this game, so offense has to be ready each and every time, either equal or try and get us ahead and try and keep us ahead. This is their chance to respond to that first touchdown given up. 13 yards, first down, Panthers. Young. And this one into the hands of D.J. Sharp. Back-to-back -back nice plays, 12 yards that time and a first down. Well, only three plays in here, but really, Charles, a solid start for this offense, and now we'll see if they can continue their mission to end this drive in six. And I wonder if their play call right now is reflecting on that last big play that they've had on this drive. Do you come back with something similar, or do you have a counter to it to kind of show it and go to something else and create another big play? And Young's throw there incomplete. He was trying to get that one out to his running back out of the backfield, but that one was red and timed perfectly, and they were able to break it up. Young's incompletion on first down leads to a second and 10. 
They will run for the first time with Miles Sanders. And he's going to get stopped up quickly. Give him a yard down to the 43. The first down line at the 34 here on third down. Young will set to throw. To the sideline and incomplete. Man coverage is certainly a staple of their defense and it's built for plays like that, forcing that incompletion. Carolina punt team out there led by Johnny Hecker. Brandon Powell deep for Minnesota. And this will be out of bounds. Now it's a question of where they'll mark it. And they'll say it crosses at the 11-yard line. And the Vikings taking the field here for their second drive of the game. And they'll be looking to duplicate that first drive, the one that got them that 7-0 lead. Of course they would. I mean, look, they're on the road. So getting the 7-0 lead was huge for them, right? Imagine getting up two touchdowns on the road, taking the crowd out of the game. It'd be ideal. First down, here's Cousins. Complete, Jefferson to target. And he'll take this across the 25 before going out of bounds. 16 yards right off the bat and a first down. Well, as a coach, you absolutely love seeing your offense find their rhythm early, and that's exactly what we've seen so far. They had a touchdown on their opening drive, and now they connect here for another nice gain for a first down. This offense is moving the ball well, exactly as he drew it up in practice. Now Cousins here on the bootleg. And an off-balance throw there, and it's going to wind up incomplete. But prior to that, he had hit his first six passes to start the game, so on a nice little run to begin. It feels like this offense has carried its dress rehearsal into the game, you know, because you do practice it, you do go through it, and in this case, it is clicking exactly like they drew it up. A second down throw for Cousins. Over the middle and complete to Addison. Five yards, now it's third and five. Oh, I see you nodding your head along with me, partner, because it's pretty obvious what they were trying to do there on the drag route. With his speed, they're hoping he can turn the corner and maybe take this to the house. But that was excellent work defensively to make sure once he caught it, he wasn't going anywhere. Cousins again. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he will have a Vikings first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. How about the first quarter he's putting together out wide? Pretty impressive. I think that he likes it, the fact that we're playing this as a day game. You know, some guys, they respond better in the evenings for some reason it builds up. For this guy, day game, and he is off and running. You're exactly right. 100 might be conservative with the start that he's had here in the first quarter. Yeah, by the numbers, he's on pace for 200-plus right now. And he'll get across midfield and into Carolina territory. And give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. Well, they didn't get a whole lot out of that one, but I think you've got to continue to try and run and try and keep the defense honest. You mean or else he'll just sit back, dare you to throw it on every down? Yeah, you get your quarterback hit a lot that way, too. Second down, Cousins. Oh, and that is incomplete. Just his second incompletion so far. He's 8 for 10. I think he'll take 80%. There's no doubt that he will, but if you're the defensive play caller, you better circle what you just dialed up on your play sheet and come back to it because you just caused an incompletion. You need a few more of those. Seventh play of the drive upcoming here on third and six. Cousins. And the throw there going to be incomplete. It certainly looked like someone was very confident in his ability to fit that one in. I would say he was overconfident because there wasn't a whole lot of separation there. Had that one covered pretty well downfield and knocked it away. So on fourth down, Ryan Wright on to punt for Minnesota. And no return here. Where will they spot it? They say just outside the 20-yard line. The Panthers coming back out onto the field for their second drive. Defense got the better of them last series, forcing a punt. 
See if they make a few changes in the game plan here and try to get points out of this drive. First and 10. On play action, Young to the right side and complete to Thomas. No gain on the play there, it'll be second down. Up the middle they go with Sanders. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. And once again, leverage wins. The offensive line lower than the defensive front. They moved them and found some good space for the guy carrying the ball. In search of four yards here to pick up the first down. To throw, Young. Now they go screen. It's complete. And he'll be brought down, but a tip of the cap on the spin move. That gives him a first down. It's a gain of eight, and it'll wind up with the chains. They're already down seven to nothing after the touchdown a minute ago, so a three and out here would not be ideal for them. Nice job finding his receiver there, and they get the first down. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Throwing, Young. Short throw underneath to Hurst. Two yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. They go play action, Young. That swung out wide to Sanders. Give him a gain of five on the completion. And it makes it third down and two yards to go. So the completion there, Charles, looking at this defense, certainly in for a tough task here this afternoon. What are some of the keys for them if they want to come out on top? Well, the first thing, partner, is they just allowed a completion there. They don't want to get a string of those going. Let him get his confidence. Let him get into the rhythm of the game, the flow of the game. And all of a sudden, he's feeling like he can do no wrong. You want to really get after his timing a little bit, knock a few balls away, and make things uncomfortable for him. Because if he feels relaxed, you are in for a tough afternoon. How about this defense? They came up with a couple of big plays in this sequence, and none better than the one right there, forcing the incompletion and bringing up fourth down. On fourth down, the punt team is on as this is sent away. The Vikings now heading on to the field. Over on the sideline, hoping to hit that reset button between possessions. Last time out, they had to punt it away. This time, hoping to finish this thing off in the end zone. Cousins and the Vikings with a first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. On play action, they'll throw. Oh, going for Jefferson downfield. And that's going to wind up incomplete. However, we do have a flag down. Let's check in with our referee. We can't have that. Well, obviously, they never want to see penalties on that defense, but this one a little bit more significant there on the downfield pass play. And coaches preach it all the time. You can't put yourself in that kind of position if you're the defender. You've got to stay in a spot far downfield where you can play the ball without creating extra contact. So the yellow flag came out, and that leads to a new set of downs for this offense. First and 10. Cousins now. And he overshot him there. It's out of bounds incomplete. He was trying to find Justin Jefferson there. That'll bring up second down. Here's Cousins. And that will be incomplete. Trying to dial up the long one way out there, but it'll be third down. 
Well, so far on this drive, they've done some good work. They force incompletions on first and second down, bring up third and ten. That brings up the big question. Do they bring pressure or do they play coverage on this down? On third down, Cousins. And that will be incomplete as well. Strong coverage by Carolina. And on we go to fourth down. That is certainly one way to frustrate a quarterback. One of those extra defenders on the field. Dime package, lots of speed, no space to fit in the football. And he's going to miss this one. Wide to the left from distance. It's no good. And this will remain a one touchdown game. They had a chance there to really build a nice early lead, go up a couple of scores. But he doesn't hit that one quite right, and it winds up in empty possession. The possession of the football goes over to Carolina. The last series for him, a little disappointing, forced to punt. And now they'll try to do better here and come away with some points as they begin this drive, first and ten. They've got good starting field position as they come up here first and 10 on their side of midfield at the 47. It'll be Sanders to begin the drive. And they'll work this down to the 40-yard line tackled there. Solid way to start the drive. 13 yards picking up the first. Usually we see runs like this as the defense breaks down later in the game, but this guy's setting the tone early. Running through all types of tackles and put the defense back on its heels. to Sanders on first down. And he gets this to the 35. Good for a gain of five. Now second and five. Here's a quick throw to Thielen. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. After one, seven nothing on EA Sports. Second quarter now from Charlotte, and it's the Panthers with the football. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. A give running left. It's Sanders. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Another run with Sanders. And he'll go down here at the 12-yard line. Call it a gain of five that time, and they'll be left with a third and about four. Now Young. He's got his running back out of the backfield. And the Panthers are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. It's a nice job hitting him on the angle route there. Coming out of the backfield, cutting sharply across the middle. And that's good timing between the quarterback and his receiver. Effective third down play to move the chains. Young. Eluding the pressure right. And he'll take this into the end zone. Touchdown, Carolina. Bryce Young, a six-yard touchdown run. And the Panthers are an extra point away now from tying this ball game. And this is a balancing act for a head coach with a rookie quarterback. You've got to walk a line with it. You don't want him getting happy feet, but you also don't want to rein in what worked for him in college. And here, he pulls it down, takes it himself, and takes it into the end zone. Pinheiro's extra point up and good. And we are tied at seven. So on 
They'll leave it at seven now as they kick it away. And this taken in at the goal line. And he won't get this to the 20 yard line as he's down at the 19. For the football going back to the Vikings offense. Last time out, they had that long 50 plus yard field goal that they missed. And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, okay, do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say that the answer would be yes. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker. But just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they told their offensive guys, can we get a little bit closer yeah, get this a time? Closer. Yeah, well, you know, I'd rather get in the end zone first and foremost. But if all else fails, less of a field goal attempt for him. Pressure comes in. He's brought down. It's a Panther sack. Brian Burns flying in there and dropping it for the sack. Offenses have to continue to try and come up with ways to block this man. Otherwise, those types of plays happen. This is why the Panthers rebuff trade offers for Burns all offseason, knowing he's a franchise cornerstone. Career high, 12 and a half sacks last year, 38 in his first four seasons, and he added another one right there. And they need to work to at least get some of this yardage back after the sack. Second and 19. They go play action. Cousins. Throw left side, taken in by Jefferson. And just not much to be had there. One yard out to the 10. This offense so far on third down, just one for three thus far. This will be third and 19. Cousins to throw it. He's going to loft it deep right sideline. And that will be incomplete. They weren't scared to let it fly, but it falls to the ground and brings up fourth down. Two things you can do in that situation. Run and punt the football or try and take your shot at getting the first down. They chose the latter, but they'll have to punt all the same. And here's Ryan right now as the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. And no return on this one as the fair catch is signaled for and taken. It'll be a 39-yard punt, no return. And the Panthers will take over now, first and 10. They start on the ground here at Sanders. And he's got it across the midfield stripe and into Viking territory. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. Hey, it's not the most spectacular play, but I think most teams will take that every single time for the first play of a drive. Begin the series with positive yardage and set yourself up for a very manageable second down. Second down, back to Sanders. And this won't be enough to pick up the first. A gain of two, third and one. And that flag accepted. Still second down. They'll come up now on a second and long after the hold. Off the play fake, Young. And this one too low. Uh, you got a young quarterback, you know, maybe that's just an example of a growing pain for him. I think you're right about that because when the game starts to move fast and it moves quickly on him, a lot of times they fall back on what they know best, their arm. He's, he's slinging it on this one. Had a wide open target, but didn't have the proper footwork to increase his accuracy. Young on third down. That is caught. And they're able to work this to the 25 before it's all said and done. A big one there on third down. They hit for 30 yards. The timing was absolutely true as he caught it working across the field. Plenty of space for him to roam. But notice how he keeps his head on a swivel looking for defenders who may crop up out of nowhere. That turned into a big play. First and 10, it's Sanders. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down. Second and right of the yard. Okay, he didn't break that one all the way. The 
but you got to know that he feels like he's right on the verge, and that's probably exactly what he's telling him in the huddle right now. Just need a yard here, second and one. They'll go again with Sanders. And now they're inside the 10 as he's brought down at the 9. 52 yards on the ground for him now on nine carries. That solid gainer will put them on the doorstep of the end zone. More importantly, it gives them a fresh set of downs. Nice work right there. Young now. Toward the pylon caught. And he'll be brought down right on the edge of the goal line at about the one-yard line. Nice gain of eight that time, and it's second and goal. Great footwork there, Charles, to dot the eye, stay in bounds, get both feet in. He's probably thinking, though, man, I made a catch like that that close to the end zone. I should have scored. Yeah, there's always a regret when you're that close to the goal line. But let's go back to what you talked about before, getting his feet down. What'd you say, dotting the eye? Mm -hmm. I and he's got a touchdown, Panthers. DJ Chark touchdown reception and the Panthers have taken the lead and all about timing there on that short slant Charles exactly right that was timed up so well the route the throw touchdown Pinheiro now to add the extra point and he's got it it's now a 14-7 ball game so that drives seven plays in length. And it's DJ Chark who finishes it off with a touchdown reception. Touchdown, here's Pinheiro to kick it off. And he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22. The Vikings head out to take over once again. That 7 0 lead of theirs short lived as they've now given up two straight touchdowns to fall behind by seven. Yeah, but no cause for discouragement here. Yeah, they've fallen behind, but haven't they proven that they can go down and score? So what was the formula that got them down there the first time? Get back to something close to that, and maybe they can get this game tied up. Cousins now to throw on first down. This one brought in by Jefferson. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. Ball on the 30 now. Here's second and a couple. Well, oh, they'll run it here on the jet sweep. And this is not going to work as planned. He's going to be met and dropped behind the line of scrimmage. He'll lose a yard on the play, so now they need three yards on third down. That's the danger, Charles, of running plays like this for your wide receiver. They can hit big or they can be duds. Yeah, you're exactly right about that because if they're forced to try and go around defenders behind the line of scrimmage, sometimes you can give yardage in order to gain it. But in this case, they gave yardage and didn't get it back. Now a shot taken on third down, but it's going to wind up incomplete. Not much going on this drive. Looks like they're going to have to punt it away, CD. And right now, I know a lot of their fans are screaming for the OC to change things up, get away from what he's been calling. Sometimes you just need better execution of the plays that have been called. So on fourth down, on is the punter, Ryan Wright. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. That'll go as a 46-yard punt with a return of seven. And it will be first and ten as they take over. This offense returns to the field. And the former Penn State star, Miles Sanders, we get a look at him. And he's well on his way to a 100-yard game. He's already more than halfway there. We're only in the second quarter. And what I've always loved about running backs is they'll tell you, I had no idea how many yards I had. Right. Those guys have an innate <laughs> sense of where they are in a ball game and how many yards they've accumulated because you know they're always working towards 100. He's been working well towards 100 here. 
On the counter now, it's Sanders. And if there was a lane there, it closed up quickly as he stopped for no gain. Second down. And when the defense wins and gives up no yardage on a running play, that's something they can build on and carry themselves forward throughout the game. Here's second and 10. It's Young off play action. And the defense loses him. It's complete. And he'll finally be taken down at the two-yard line. A big play there for Carolina. 69 yards. A oh, big-time credit. What a play design there. They wanted to get him loose in the open field, and they succeeded. He had all sorts of room to operate in, and they finally track him down inside the five-yard line. After the big play, a chance to finish now on first and goal. Sanders is into the end zone for a Panthers touchdown. Well, that was a quick drive. The passing game set it up, and then the running game finishes it off. And how about how few plays it was to get it done, but they threw it downfield and then pounded it into the end zone. And as a former defender, I can tell you, it hurts just a little bit more when they run it into the end zone instead of throwing it. Pinheiro's extra point up and good. And it's now 21 to seven. Touchdown, here's Pinheiro to kick it off. Fielded just outside the goal line. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. Minnesota's offense takes over possession. and the Vikings with a first and 10 at their own 22. The play action fake. They'll look to throw. Addison holds it in. Ball on the 28-yard line. Here's second down and three. To throw his Cousins. Looking for Addison again, and he's got him again. Now inside the 25. Touchdown, Vikings! Jordan Addison, 72 yards. And the Vikings are able to strike quickly here as they are in for six. And sometimes those slants... They can be so tough to defend after the catch. It, it, it just happens so quickly. And really, what gets set up there is how quickly everything happens. Ball's out of the hands of the passer in a hurry, and he just takes it and goes. And he went all the way into the end zone. Joseph connects on the extra point, and they're back with it a touchdown at 21-14. Now Joseph tees it up to kick off following the touchdown. This fielded right at the goal line. And able to get this across the 20, but not much further as he's dropped at the 23-yard line. Now the Panthers and Miles Sanders headed out for another drive. He's been good. His guys are winning. So far, the recipe working here in the second quarter. He doesn't like to just tote the rock. 
He wants to carry his team on his back, and that's what he's done throughout this game. Yeah, he's done that. He'll be hoping to continue that trend. They'll start this drive out on the ground, and they see right through that defensively as he'll be hit and taken down to the backfield. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. When a draw works, it can be a thing of beauty, but when it doesn't, oh, it can be ugly. And in this case, loss of yardage ugly. After the loss to start out, here's second and 11. Now here's Young. Coverage downfield led to him taking off, picking up the first down on a 13-yard run. With Charles in the past, a lot of people call this offense one-dimensional. I think you did. Well, I think it was you. I'll be honest, I did. <laughs> I think the fan base is hoping with this young rookie that they can put some wrinkles in this offense like we just saw. I think you're exactly right because we did have that discussion that what we've seen in the past from them, they needed to broaden, and they have done it here. Look at what he's bringing to their offense, and now as a defensive coordinator, You've got some extra work to do to prepare for him and their offense. Looking for more there on first down, but this throw downfield incomplete. Second and ten. Out of the gun, it's Young. Now throw right side here, going to be incomplete. Feels like they're getting caught in between here because they didn't completions on first and second down. Now you got to worry a little bit about the clock because you prefer not to give them another shot here in the first half. But if you don't pick up the first down, guess what? You're likely going to have to. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has them staring at a third and ten. Young. And Sanders has got it complete. And he can only manage to take this thing to the 38, well shy of the first down. So on fourth down, here's Johnny Hecker to punt it away. And the fair catch is taken at about the 13-yard line here. So possession goes over here on the punt. And the Vikings will be backed up deep to begin their drive as they take over first and 10. First and ten, Cousins. Middle of the field to Jefferson. And he almost gets this to the 30, taken down about a yard shy. First down yardage on the first play of the drive, give him 14. The Vikings in the hurry up. They're hustling up to the line. Cousins on first down. Another one on this play for Justin Jefferson. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. 12 more yards for him there. It's a first down. I like that one, partner. They go back to back with excellent gains. And really, it shouldn't be a surprise who they were throwing the ball to. He's their best guy. Yeah, we knew that they would get him involved early. They're doubling down on getting him involved early. Don't be surprised. They'll come right back to him again. They haven't shown the propensity to be able to stop him. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. That's a 12-yard gain now on back-to-back -back plays. Well, so far, a little to no resistance by the defense on this drive alone. Three passes, three completions, three first downs. They're taking it to him, and it's paying off. Meanwhile, Cousins, and the throw here caught by Addison. Now the Vikings will use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with 25 seconds to go here in half number one. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. 
Again, it's Cousins to Jefferson on the slam. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. You can see the time and effort and thought that they put into their passing game because it was evident right there. It looks like a simple pitch and catch, but you and I both know that they have planned for this and worked hard to make it happen. And with just four seconds left in this first half, a timeout call. So with four seconds to go in the half, here's the field goal unit onto the field. This one from 46 yards out. Joseph's got it, and that'll bring him back within four. So he missed his first attempt, remember, but this time he gets back on the bike and knocks it home. Yeah, and sometimes that first one can really impact you moving forward. It can just stay with you too long and affect everything else you do during the game. In this case, though, able to shake it off. He's riding high again. So still time for the kickoff here. One second to go in the half as this one is away. So we've reached halftime here in a four-point game. As we'll send you down the coast now to Orlando, that's where we find Jonathan Coachman ready with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. And welcome in everyone to our downtown Orlando studios in this EA Sports Halftime Report. What a treat to watch the rookie in that first half. The number one overall pick, Bryce Young. He had a touchdown both in the air and on the ground to help push his guys into the lead at the break. Okay, Coach, yeah, adjustments likely going to play a big role in this third quarter in what's been a tight contest so far. It's been a shootout so far. We'll see which defense can make the adjustments as we get back underway in the second half. Oh, a dangerous return man showing it here. And a great return, solid field position. He's up all the way to the 45-yard line. In a game like this, you're fighting, you're scratching, you're clawing, you're hammering away. That return has the feel of maybe cracking the rock and giving them a chance to get a big-time advantage. Ready, so good starting field position for him here as they come up first and 10 at the 45. Throwing, Young. He's going to drop this down to Sanders. So just three yards on the completion there. And that's going to bring up second down. And just in general, Charles, on a play like that, how tough is it for the defense to account for a running back essentially being a receiver downfield? It's very difficult, especially if the running back has skills like a receiver, and you're aware of that before the game even begins. So throughout your practice sessions, you're going to want to be aware of him. Where is he lining up? What can he do? What kind of damage can he do to us downfield? And who can match up with him without weakening our overall defense? You're exactly right. It's a tough task to match up to him. Two yards still to go. Third down now. They'll try and run for it with Sanders. And good space to operate there as he takes this down inside the 35-yard line. 72 yards on the ground now for Sanders. He's got a first down. They've got the lead early here in the third quarter, and runs like that are how they established that lead in the first half. I love the fact that you're using the word lead because they are leading from the front 
pounding on the defense right now with the running game and truly establishing themselves here in the second half. First and 10, Young. It's caught by Sanders. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. Just about every quarterback is trained to really look downfield first before you come back and make a nice, safe throw. And in this case, that's exactly what he did. Found his running back, let him create some space, and it turned out to be a nice play for the offense. Now Young. He'll find Thielen work in the middle. Two catches in the first half. Now he's got a third here, and it's good for a first. They go back to the ground with Sanders. They'll get to him just inside the 15-yard line. And even after that fancy footwork, we saw a good job defensively to recover. Second and five. Another run here with Sanders. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. It'll be a loss of a couple on the play, so now third down coming up. I know they've got to be careful not to go to the well too often, but it's a fine line, isn't it? Because sometimes, if you've got success, you want to just keep pounding away. But no success there. They rallied quickly on the defensive end. Young to throw it. That one behind his man, incomplete. I like the call. It looked like the right time to dial up a running back screen, but this one got disrupted right from the start and ends up falling incomplete. So Young will head to the sideline and on is Pinheiro for the Panther field goal. This from 32 yards away. The kick by Pinheiro is good. And they will open their lead up to a touchdown at 24-17. Well, looking at it from a defensive perspective, that keeps the deficit very, very manageable. You know, all things considered, not a bad job on the defensive side. I would say that you've pointed out something pretty good right there, and that is you actually have both sides happy with that exchange. You know, happy in quotes, of course. One team, hey, we've kept, kept it within range. The other side saying, hey, we put points on the board and did stretch out the lead. Let's see how this one turns out. Yeah, still bottom line, though, three points for the opening drive of the third quarter. After the field goal, on to kick it away is Pinheiro. And he will be brought down here inside the 20. Good coverage as he's dropped at the 17. Justin Jefferson and the rest of this offense, they've got their helmets back on and they're ready for this next series. And I know that they double teamed him a couple times, but not a ton. Whatever they're doing isn't working. He's up over 100 yards. We'll see how they adjust. And when they do that, they weaken their defense in other places as well. And how many times have we done games where we've seen a guy have a big game like this? But it's usually not by himself, is it? Right. Usually it opens it up for other people to have big games as well. That's down the field for Jefferson. And it's knocked away and incomplete. I'm sure this isn't a novel thought, but maybe run some simpler routes instead of trying to get it all back in one shot. Defense certainly appears to be ready for him. Try and get it back little by little instead of in big chunks. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and 10. They'll go Madison up the middle. And he'll get this up over the 25 to the 26. Nine yards, not quite enough, and they'll be left now with third and one. Well, there's something we haven't seen much of in this game, a really nice run. Did they decide to come back with it, or was that just a little flash, and maybe they continue to try and throw the ball? Third down and one. They'll try to get it on the ground with Madison. And he's going to have the first down yardage as he's down at about the 30-yard line. And five yards on the play there as the drive will continue. Running lanes were at a premium in the first half, but he's able to find some room there, and he's hoping that that's a precursor of a big second half. You can just kind of sense the momentum turning here. It's first and ten. 
Here's Madison running on first down, and he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. I see a shake of the head as he gets up, and you've got to imagine he's thinking, guys, you got to help me out. He's hoping his team can read his thoughts because he definitely needs some assistance. Now a second down throw for Cousins. Going underneath, he's got Hawkinson. The result, only four yards there on the play. Third and seven now. Now Cousins. He's got his target. That's complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. The end result, 21 yards. And this was a nice example of an offensive coordinator scheming his guy open. Just a little underneath route, just trying to free up some space. And it worked awfully well. Got him not just space, but plenty of room to run after the catch to pick up really nice yardage. So from Panther territory now, it's first and 10 at the 46. And they'll send the slot in motion left. Now they show Jet Sweep, but instead a run up the middle here. Solid running on the carry, but still brought down just inside of the 40. So they cite the right guard this time with a holding penalty. And so many different assignments you can have at that position, and sometimes you might just be a step too late and have to grab and hold on. To throw, Cousins. And that'll be incomplete. At this point in the second half, one mistake on a forced throw could doom your chances of a comeback, so that's the right call there to just throw that one away. Second and 16. To the air again, it's Cousins. And that'll be incomplete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on third down. That's a tough spot for a running back coming out of the backfield because you know he's got to look for the football. Knowing full well, he's got a man coming his way full steam, and he broke that one up. Ninth play of the drive now on third and a country mile. Throwing Cousins. This goes out wide from Madison. And he can only manage to get this to the 45-yard line. Well short of the first. That one good for only six, and it leaves him with a fourth down. Caught that look from you there, partner. I think we're on the same page on that one. Just his first catch. I think we both thought he'd be a little more active in the passing game. Let's see if that's the start of them trying to get the ball to him a little bit more here in the second half. And this will hit just beyond the goal line as it's into the end zone for a touchback. Here come the Panthers now, set to take over on offense. And they split the uprights last time for three. They've got the lead. They're not going to play this conservative. They're, they're not hoping for another field goal. They're hoping for a touchdown. I'm with you on that one. I like where your head is. I like the way you're thinking because you're exactly right. Trying to sit on a lead and play that way, that doesn't work too well for most teams. Run your offense. Yeah, run what you do best. On the gas. Exactly. Put it all the way down and try to increase your lead in a big way. And the best way to do it, touchdowns. steps between the quarterback and the running back you need for a good play. counter you have to have it because you're setting up your blocking there's a timing element as well but they have to marry up their steps otherwise that timing gets thrown out the window timing was great there and a big run it's young on first down and his throw is going to be incomplete well, so many times defensive backs get caught playing the man rather than the football but not in this case. That's an excellent play. Did exactly what you're supposed to do. Attack the football and help break up the pass. And yep, as a result, knocks it down. Young's incompletion on first down leads to a second and 10. Young's throw here on target to Hurst. 
They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. They gave up the completion there, but this is what zone defenses count on, catching the ball and not much run after the catch. They'll come up now, third and three. Young will set to throw. That is caught. And yeah, they will touch him down, but not before he gets the first. Nice third down conversion of even 20 yards. Partner, this is one of the best routes anyone can have in their offensive playbook. Tough to defend because you think it's a go route, and then he breaks it back on the comeback. There's one other thing you need as well. A well-thrown ball. Exactly right. You have a guy who has some precision in throwing the football because of the timing of the route. To the air once more, Young. And his throw is incomplete. Hayden Hurst, former first-round pick, the intended target. And it's second down. They go play action, Young. He's got his big tight end. That's Hurst. Nine yards, not quite enough, and they'll be left now with third and one. Nice play call, a little bit of play action right there. If you can get those linebackers to freeze for just a split second, that's usually all the room you need in order to get it to your tight end. This will be play number seven on the drive. Third and a yard. On third down, they'll run it with Sanders. Boy, no chance as he was met and dropped behind the line there. Tough sledding. They lose a yard there on third. Just a simple run play there on third and one, but this D was up to the challenge and stopped them, bringing up fourth down. The offense staying out. They're going to go on fourth and two. Now Young, able to find the open man. That's complete. And he'll be touched down here, but not before he does pick up the first. They're able to keep the drive alive seven yards that time, and the decision to go for it proves to be a good one. They couldn't ask for much more to this point in the second half. A gorgeous day, one score game, first and ten here. Young to throw it. Sets him up first and goal. I'll tell you what, a lot of those mid-range throws have been available because sometimes teams get too concerned about the deep ball and they leave too much space in front of them. And these guys have been taking advantage so far. They'll run with Sanders. And he will take it across for a Panthers touchdown. Miles Sanders. His second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Panthers will add on to their lead here in the final minute of the third. Sometimes offensive can get too cute down near the goal line, but there's nothing fancy about this one. As Coach Lombardi would say, we get a seal here, and we get a seal here, and we run this play in the alley. And that's good work to hit the hole hard and finish in the end zone. Pinheiro's extra point up and good. And the lead now up to 14. Touchdown, here's Pinheiro to kick it off. And taken down just past the 20 at about the 21-yard line. Jordan Addison in the offense, out for another drive. Good day for him so far here in the third quarter. He's hit pay dirt once, over 100 yards, but hey, it's the third quarter. He's thinking, I want more, right? He wants more, and it just increases the confidence of his team because every play he makes, 
That means his quarterback is really feeling good about throwing the football. Probably feels like he can't throw an incomplete pass when he throws it to him right now. Yeah, he's looked really, really sharp. Cousins now to throw on first down. Open man is Osborne. And they nearly get this all the way to midfield. Mark him down at the 49. And now they'll stop play here, at least momentarily. A member of the Vikings in some discomfort after that last play. The medical staff will attend to him, and we will step aside. So one play, and they're already just shy of midfield. Throwing his cousins. And it's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. I like the thought process there. They connected on a big play, and sometimes you find the defense vulnerable. So they went for the bigger shot, went for it all on that one. This time, they were ready for it. Now a second and ten. Cousins now. Third and ten, a big play to start the drive, but nothing since. Cousins again. Going underneath, he's got Hawkinson. And they stop him up short of the first down as they get him at about the 43. So they'll get eight out of that completion. And it'll be fourth down. That pattern and scheme was well defensed on third down. He tried to just sprint from one side of the field to the other, and they got it to him quickly. But no chance at yards after the catch there, and they stop him short. And now the young man has it. It's a fake. And the gamble pays off. They get the first. So a moment to catch our collective breath after the fourth down conversion. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. And we're back now in Charlotte. It's the Vikings in possession of the football, but they need some points. They're trailing here to start the fourth. So the drive stays alive after the fourth down conversion. First and 10 inside the 30. They'll send a receiver here in motion right. Now Cousins fakes a jet sweep, and off play action, he wants to throw it. Touchdown! Justin Jefferson, 26 yards. And the Vikings have made it a one-score game again here in the fourth. So how about that for an answer? They get the touchdown there, and it's back to a one-score game here in the fourth. And that's what these guys have done all game long because they've scratched and slashed their way to stay in this game. And by now, we should all realize they're not going away. Now the pressure again swings to their defense because they're going to need to find some way to get the ball back. Joseph connects on the extra point. And now things get a bit more interesting here in this fourth quarter. Now Joseph tees it up to kick off following the touchdown. Blackshear now on the return. And he won't quite make it to the 25. This offense returns to the field. And the former Penn State star, Miles Sanders, we get a look at him. He's toppled the century mark already receiving the football, closing in on that on the ground, too. They've really had trouble handling him. I think from what we've seen in this game, his success through the air 
has started to open things up for him on the ground because now he's loosened up the defense, right? They've got to play just about every snap as if another receiver can get downfield on them, and he's been that receiver. Now they bring him back to the backfield. I think his yardage running the ball will increase as this one goes on. Well, they might need to devote some extra attention to him, something just to stop the momentum he has. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. That was a really nice play, be able to stack that one up. When they get back in the huddle, he's got he's to tell his guys up front, great job. They kept people off of him, allowed him to run free and make the hit on the runner. Filled the gap nicely, kept him to just a one-yard gain. Now he dumps this off over the middle. He'll be dropped after a gain of about six across the 30 to the 31. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers tight ends because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. Third and short yardage, Young. Work in the middle of the field and he's got a man complete. And he is going to have the Panthers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. He's been the go-to guy and they need a big play there on third down when his way it worked out. Doesn't matter whether they scouted it or that they think he's going to get the ball. He has a knack for finding his way open and completing the connection. Short throw there caught by Thomas. So give him five yards there on the pitch and catch, and it'll be second down. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made it a nice, easy pitch and catch. Hoping he could break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. Ball placed at the 45 for second and five. Here is Young. That is caught by Thielen. And this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Vikings 26. The catch and run pays off for 29 yards. That crossing route is so effective when you hit it just right because you get a guy on the move and then we see the end result there. Nightmare for the defense. They got a guy with a full head of steam. Not only does he catch it, but he picks up additional yardage after it. From Viking territory now, they'll come up first and 10 at the 26-yard line. Shotgun snap, and then the give to Sanders. And a strong run there as he'll maneuver his way down inside the 15. Had the gain here to the previous play, and it's better than 40 yards total. And that's the type of run that they're looking for because they'll need to continue to rely on him to move the sticks in this tight game in order to preserve this lead. Here's a first and 10 at the 14-yard line. They'll run with Sanders up the middle. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. It was Daniil Hunter to make the play in the backfield. Partner, I know my grade school teachers never would believe this, but I can absorb a lesson. I think there's a lesson in this one. He's having a great day running the football, but occasionally they're going to find a way to stop you, aren't they? Yeah, this time the defense stepped up in what's been so far a tough game for them. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. Uh, during that run, an injury here. We got one of those big blockers in some discomfort. But hopefully, obviously, nothing serious here. Medical staff, though, going to take a peek, and we'll take a break. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. Over the middle, hold in by Sharp. And he'll be tackled right on the 10, well short of the first down. They'll wind up getting seven on the play. And that'll bring up fourth down. First down would have been nice, but now you get to kick the field goal, still go up two scores. They tried to get it, though, didn't they? Through the pass, got the completion just short of the first down. But you're exactly right. Run the field goal unit out there. Kick it. Put it through the post. Go up two scores. So his second field goal of the game, and that could turn out to be the big one. Yeah, you have to make them score twice to beat you, and that's not impossible. But here in the fourth quarter, puts their backs clearly against the wall. Thank you. 
After the field goal, on to kick it away is Pinheiro. And the tackle going to be made right there at the 25-yard line. Now the Vikings offense gets set to take over here. And the complexion of this one has changed a fair amount. That last field goal made it a two-score game, so they need to get points out of this drive relatively quickly. Cousins and the Vikings with a first and 10 at their 25-yard line. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. And that one drops down incomplete. Good coverage there, forced the ball free, and it's second down. Jordan Addison, the intended receiver, and that'll bring up second down. Cousins going underneath. He's got Hawkinson, and yeah, this will be a gain of five as he gets it to the 30. They really love to get him into one-on-one -on -one opportunities, and this is one way, work him out of the slot and create a mismatch. Who's going to cover him? Corner, safety, linebacker? He's got a way to beat all of those positions. The Vikings on third down. They've converted a third of their opportunities, three for nine. This will be third and five. He's got his target. That's complete. And he will have a Vikings first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook but oh so effective. Nice completion there, keeps the sticks moving. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. They'll throw again, Cousins. Going underneath, he's got Hawkinson. So five yards here, five on the play, and it's second down. And Brandon, as you know, sometimes it's a lot tougher to run with these tight ends nowadays in the NFL. They're just bigger wide receivers. He lined up on the left side of the formation, ran a drag route across the field, and tried to work his way open. He was able to make the catch, but the defenders were there. Couldn't do a whole lot with it afterwards. Throwing again on second down, but this time it's incomplete. They come up now, third and five, following the incomplete pass. Throwing, Cousins. Now they set up the screen, that's complete. Now he's able to take it across midfield before going out of bounds. Eight yards, first down as they're able to convert. Let's give a little credit there. The offensive play caller sends that the screen pass was available. Whenever you're getting a lot of heavy pressure towards your quarterback, that's when you're thinking about running the screen and using that pressure against the defense. And it worked very well there for a first down. First down, here's Cousins. The Panther rush too strong. They get there and take him down. It'll be a loss of seven on the sack and it brings up second. He was still looking through his progressions and going through his receiver options, and while he was doing that, the defense got to him quickly in the pocket. And it was a great example of zone coverage. Well executed, well coordinated. All the receivers were covered, and he couldn't evade the rush back in the pocket. Now Cousins. This one brought in by Jefferson. It'll be a pickup of 15 as that'll lead to third down. All right, this is the time of the game where they're down a couple of scores, and they've really got to get some yards in chunks, and they know the defense doesn't want to give those up. They've got to find a way to take them anyway. Now the question is, can they string a few of those together? So they need two yards here on third down. Remember, they're already two of two on third down conversions on this drive. On play action, Cousins. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he will have a Vikings first down as they're able to convert by plenty there on third and one. That two tight ends in the formation on that one, it looked to me like he had his pick of receivers downfield. I think he was just planning on going over the middle. That's what he did. Picked up first down, too. On first and 10, Cousins into heavy traffic and it's intercepted. 
And the Panthers are going to get this back to their own 34-yard line. Well, time, I mean, certainly not on their side offensively. They had to take some chances, but that interception will further hinder their already slim chance at victory. Yeah, and you're talking about time not on their side, but it certainly is on the defense's side, and they understood that. They knew they had to press it a little bit, and they planned accordingly, and what a benefit for them, able to pick that one off and hopefully put this game away. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Following the interception, Young, short throw underneath to Hurst. That's a gain of four as we slip inside of four minutes left in regulation. continuing to run they'll probably wind this all the way before snapping it on second down Sanders here as they run out of the gun and that one goes for about six as he's taken down just shy of the 45 the fourth quarter here they've got the lead they want to keep it on the ground that's what they're doing smart football keep the clock grinding keep it going but you got to figure now they're going to see more people stacked up at the line of scrimmage as they try and bleed it out On third down, they turn to Sanders. And he's got the first down yardage before being taken down in midfield. 119 yards rushing for him now on 25 carries. Brandon, when a defense just simply can't get off the field on third down, and we all know how important that down is for both sides of the ball, you often feel like you're just a step behind whatever they're doing offensively. And one of the differences in this game, no doubt, third down conversion, and that is going to be a story they'll talk about after this one. And that winds up a decent run, and it also takes us to the two-minute warning. Nine yards is the pick up there, and they'll have a second and one. So it's Panther football as we welcome you back. And the scoreboard on their side, they're just looking to melt away these final couple of minutes and put this one in the left-hand column. The Vikings going to signal for the first of their timeouts. That'll leave them with two remaining. We'll be back after this. points of contact necessary at this stage as they'll run first down and whistles and we're going to have another stoppage of play as they call the timeout on defense with 153 left Another run with Sanders. And he'll get what he can up the middle. Three yards. That'll bring up second down. I have to imagine this will be on the ground as well as they come up second and seven. Up the middle they go with Sanders. Give him four on the carry, and it'll make this a third and about two. But if you're going to have a relay race, you're probably going to pick your backs and receivers to run it, but don't underestimate the conditioning of the offensive line. They're out there just dictating things, staying on the field, and keeping a long drive going. Play number nine set to come here on the drive on third and two. Young to throw. from making this a three-score game. 
Yet another touchdown in what has just been a high-scoring affair, a fun one to watch. And it's the rookie quarterback, Charles, coming through with yet another touchdown pass to pad the lead. Did we come into this game where defense was optional? Because it certainly feels that way, right? But when you look at the scoreboard, this rookie, he has his team moving a little bit quicker pace than his opponents. The entire offense is going to get plenty of praise, but I think these coaches have to be especially happy with what their quarterback has done. Now after the touchdown, here's Pinheiro to kick it off. And he returns this to the 22. The Vikings offense now, they get ready to head back on the field. Well, this game, it has had no shortage of offense. They've been able to put up a decent amount of points on this side, Charles. They just have not been able to keep pace with the other offense they're going against here. Yeah, that's a good way of pointing things out because now it's not a total loss because, as you said, they've scored some points, so there's some plays they can build on, moments where the game plan actually worked. But overall, though, they were just out personnel. They were going up against a team that's playing at an elite level. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. At this point, down big, you'd have to imagine this defense, they're just going to sit back, blanket the field as best they can. Yeah, this is actually the easy part of the game for them because, just as you noted, they can sit back, keep everything in front of them. But they've blanketed the field the entire game using a variety of coverages. Throwing again, Cousins on second and ten. Complete to Addison on the out route. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. Now you've got to hustle your guys to the line and get them set. Cousins from the gun on third. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. Call that a very strong gain of 24. Well, I can put my defensive cap on right now, and I know they're saying don't give up any big plays now. They've controlled this game throughout, and all they want to do is see it through to the end. I think they let their guard down a little bit with that last completion. Sometimes when you're trying not to give up bigger plays, you don't react as fast as you should on other throws. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. And a smart play there. He's probably saying, I wish I would have done that on the last drive instead of throwing the interception. One last shot now for Cousins. One last shot at the end zone. And that will be incomplete. They were going for a consolation TD, but it was not to be. And time has run out now on this game. A higher scoring game, Charles, than we typically see in the National Football League. But fun to watch these offenses. They were really clicking. It seemed like everything that they dialed up worked. Yeah, it certainly was fun to watch from our perspective. How'd you like to be those defensive coaches, though? That wasn't a blast for them at all. And let's face it, they all game 